How's it going, everyone? It's Marshall. Thank you very much for tuning into the show. Today, I'm going to be doing a studio tour. Uh, I'm going to go through all the equipment that I have. Um, I explain some details in terms of the setup that I'm using, and this is actually a couple of different rooms that I'm going to be going through. So I'm excited. I haven't done one of these since 2020, but sit back, relax. Leave some comments down below what's your favorite piece of equipment or if I'm missing anything that you think I need, I'm always open to suggestions and all that good stuff. So stay tuned. All right, everyone, take a look around here. This is the main studio room. I'm going to go through this equipment as quickly as I can. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the description box below. Uh, let's start over here in the Moog Monosynth corner where I have at the top a little fatty in white, a sub 37, and of course a mini Moog. This is the 2016 reissue of the mini Moog. And you know what? Moog has recently reissued these again. This was kind of a limited run at the time. And I was able to scoop one up right towards the end of that run. I actually got this on sale Still brand new, but actually got it on sale, which is pretty amazing, consider how much uh, the reissues cost now, the new ones. Um, anyway, Mini Moog's amazing. This whole rack is is, uh, is pretty amazing, our whole stack here. All right, let's go over here, where we have the Andromeda A6 by Alesis. Oh, look at this beauty. Uh, these came out around 2000, 2001, I believe. And uh, holy crap, is this a cool synth. 16 voice, fully analog. I think it's got digital effects, uh, but I think this was one of the first like polyphonic analog synthesizers to hit the market in a long time. Um, it's it's freaking awesome. It's multi timbral, 16 part multi timbral. Uh, believe it or not, uh, this is so much packed into this. Very cool synth. Uh, down here we have the Sequential Prophet 10. Now this is another set, uh, another situation where Sequential reissued their famous Prophet 5, and they also released a Prophet 10. It's just a Prophet 5 with five more voices. And you can see here, Prophet 10. Super cool, I'm, uh, I'm really amazed that they did that, and uh, I applaud Sequential for doing such a great job on this. Down here is the Moog 1. This is a 16 voice Moog 1, uh, and this is actually the seventh model to roll off the line that could be purchased. Uh, so this is serial number seven. Somehow I was able to get a super low serial number. And boy, is this a cool instrument. I mean, just look at it. I know looks aren't everything, but I'll tell you what, when you're trying to go through and do some sound design, it's really nice to have all these buttons and knobs on here. This thing is really a dream to have, and I can't believe it even exists, to be honest with you. But Moog One, 16 voice, epic. Uh, down here, I almost forgot to mention this. We've got the Waldorf Kyra, which I love this thing. I've used this so much. Um, some people hate this thing for some reason, but I, I really uh, uh, have grown to like this synth a lot. And then down here, we've got the Virus TI-2. And both excellent synths. So just want to make sure I got those in the video. And then not to outdo myself with any of this other stuff here, but man, this is a treat here to have is the Oberheim OBX8. Um, once again, a, a series, a, a situation where Oberheim got his namesake back and worked with Sequential, I believe, to produce this bad boy here, which is essentially three different types of Oberheim classic synths and one, a little bit of a vintage look. I kind of wish they would have done the blue pinstripes, but you know what, I'm okay with this and it sounds phenomenal. Now, I've never had an original, so, you know, I don't know. I, I know some of the uh, some of the guys with the originals might kind of poo-poo on this a little bit, but I'll tell you what, I think it sounds freaking awesome. We go up here to the V-Synth GT by Roland. Now this is probably one of the last synthesizers that Roland really put out that in terms of flag flagship instruments that I really love. Um, I love the original V-Synth. I love the GT, which is essentially two V-Synths in one. And um, yeah. If you can get a hold of one of these, I'd say buy it. All right, and up here you have a newcomer to the synth market, ASM. Uh, this is the Hydrosynth. Lots of lots of buzz about this when it came out. Holy crap, is it cool? All right, so let's come over here where we have a rack of Slim Fatties. 
Now what is going on with this, Marshall? Why do you need three Slim Fatties? Three Slim Fatties. Try saying that 10 times fast. Uh, well, honestly, I don't. I have a little fatty and I decided to polychain these three Slim, fatty, slim Fatties with the little fatty. So it's basically a, a four voice polyphonic little fatty now. So I call it the Moog Tower of Power. I did a really excellent demo of kind of how this sounds uh, using it with poly uh, polyphony and man, Moog should re-release something like this where you've got uh, the rack style mono synth and uh, you know, it just sounds great. And, but that's why I have so many so I can use it in polyphonic mode. And I'm summoning them up here in this Behringer XR 12 or whatever it is little mixer I'm just using it to sum sum up all the voices and send out a stereo signal to my patch bay down here we have the patch bay of course and we get through the mess of wires to a Proteus 2000 ladies and gentlemen anyone remember emu and the Proteus 2000 I do because it was used on a lot of very cool video games like Halo Combat Evolved which is one of my favorite game soundtracks of all time down here you have the Integra 7 uh, by Roland uh, once again, a nice little sound module. Uh, down here, we got the Roland XV5080. I think they put this in the newest uh, Jupiter XM and Jupiter X. And I think they have this on the Roland Cloud now too, which is really cool. Uh, but that's a, that's a really nice sounding module. Down here is my JD990. The screen is bugging out on this one. And this is a replacement screen I bought online. It's not the original, uh, but I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I need to replace the screen again or if something else has happened here to this. It might be, it might be a goner. I don't know. I haven't had time to troubleshoot it yet, but I need to fix that. And down here we have a Korg Triton rack, which is, uh, it's just a staple of late nineties, early two thousands, I believe. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly what year this came out, but they have the, they have this in the Korg Legacy collection now, I, I believe. So you can get a software version of this. Uh, I don't have that, but I have the original, which is cool. And down here is a Behringer XR18, which I use to actually control, or you know, for audio, for all the video production work I do. That's actually usb back into a computer. Down over here, that's the video computer. And we have here is a, uh, a, a stream deck, and this is what I control to switch cameras and all that kind of stuff over here. Yeah, on the fly, it's kind of nice. You got my my sub and audio. Um, I can't remember what this is called, and I can't see it unfortunately. But it's the M Audio subwoofer. I don't think they make these anymore. But they kind of go hand in hand with the BX eight A's that I have here, which are the same studio monitors I've had since two thousand four, believe it or not. And uh, you know, I wouldn't say they're the best in the world, but I'm super used to them, and so I kind of know what mixes should sound like on these and. That's half the battle, right? Knowing how your mix should sound. And um, let's see if I can fix this white balance a little bit. So, yeah, these are cool. Had them a long time. Uh, quadruple monitor setup. This monitor, this monitor, go to this computer for video production. These two monitors here are for music production and are actually from this rack mount PC here. And we can come down here and there's a JP8080 down here. Uh, trance synth is what most people will probably know it as a, a 10 voice JP 8000 basically with a vocoder um, I love this thing. I love the JP 8000. I have one in the other room We'll talk about it when I get there. I got some headphones um, These are the DT 770 pros. These are getting pretty old now, but uh, they still sound great and I use them all the time my primary mixer is a uh, Yamaha 01V96i. I did used to have the 01V96 version 2, but it died, so I had to buy a new one. I went with this. I think if I had to do it again, I would probably get a Behringer... Um, oh, I can't remember. One of the Behringer, sense, uh, Behringer mixers. It's uh, digital. Anyway, this still works great. Uh, 16 channels coming into the patch bay, and I can just patch all the synths in. All the synths in this room, plus uh, main outs from the other room, which I'll show in a second, all kind of come into this, and I can feed things in and out and do whatever I need to. It's very versatile, it works great, and I love it. Ableton Push over here for control. Um, Novation SL, uh, Novation 61XL Mark II. 
Um, we've got under there, you can see that is a uh, Nord, um, was it micro modular? And then I've got some little, I have another little synth here. I don't, I can't remember who makes this. This is like some kind of chiptune synth that I bought and I haven't really used it, but it was like a little independent uh, guy building these. And I can't remember if it's a NES chip that it emulates, but anyway, it's a little chiptune synth. Maybe one day I'll do a little video on that. Um, and that's about it. I got my little spaceships here. You guys like Star Trek, there we go. Enterprise D over here. Oh no, I almost forgot. And this bag here is an Novation Ultra Nova. Um, pretty cool synth. I don't really have anywhere to put it at the moment, so it's just kind of sitting in the bag. Down here, I've got a couple of circuit bent speak and read and uh, speak and math. Sorry for my finger. Let's get that out of the way. Speak and math and speak and read. And these are cool for making some cool, like, uh, glitched out text uh, or speech effects and stuff. So these have been modified by FastMat. Uh, I don't know if that guy still makes these, but these are super cool. And let's go into the other room. And here it is, my live rig setup that I've been working on for years. You folks have been following me for a while. You know how long I've been working on this. Uh, I'm starting to make some serious progress on production for live performance, and I can't wait to show you guys more of what I'm working on. But let me give you a little lowdown here of what's going on in this room. So over here we have an Open Labs Miko Timberland Special Edition, but this isn't your ordinary Open Labs uh, Miko. This has been upgraded with more modern hardware. I say modern because what was in here was from like 2004 originally and ran Windows XP, which just doesn't cut it today. But it's been upgraded with uh, fairly modern hardware now, and I can run Ableton and all my plugins and all that kind of stuff. So I basically use this as an advanced uh, processing, mixing uh, section, basically like a computer to do all my real-time audio, which feeds out of this Behringer XR18. All the synths are plugged into here for audio, USB to this, and that's how the magic happens in here for all that. That way I can do actual production on the live performance in terms of you know, using EQs and compression and all those goodies. All right, and over here, JP8000, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, the uh, big brother in the other room, uh, the 8080, anyways. So uh, this is one of my favorite synths for trance. So I'm making trance in here, so that we gotta have this. And over here, Korg Radius. These are super cool. Uh, I had one of these years and years ago. Um, I think I bought another one in like 2015-ish, somewhere around there. Uh, but it was just the rack. And I ended up finding the keyboard portion online at some point. And so I made a complete thing. But yeah, Core Radius, super cool. Down here, Yamaha N1X. It's the only Yamaha synth I have. And that's because Yamaha don't make uh, instruments with very good interfaces. And this is, uh, this is an example of that. The interface is trash on this. But it does have a software editor, which is kind of interesting, because I think this came out around 96, 97. And I th I can't think of another synthesizer that had a software editor at that time. Um, but it has one. So you can kind of forego this garbage, all the multi-function knobs and all this whole garbage. I, I don't know what they were thinking, but this is a great sound in virtual analog synth as well. And kind of like this trio right here, really good for trance. Over here is a Waldorf Quantum, um, super awesome synthesizer. They've recently come out with a Mark II, which has a polyphonic aftertouch key bed. Uh, it makes me so, so bummed I don't have that, but honestly, this is plenty good. Uh, it's eight voices with uh, um, analog filters and a bunch of digital filters. I think there's an update I need to do to this to where I can get 16 voices without the analog filters, but haven't done it yet because I'm kind of in the middle of stuff and I don't want to mess anything up. All right, and up here we have the original V-Synth. Um, this has the black and white screen, but believe it or not, guys, this was a touch screen. And I can't remember when these came out, 2003-ish, four? I don't know, but to have a touch screen on something like this back then is pretty cool. And it's nice, it's pretty responsive. And um, time trip pad, you got the D-beams, folks. D-beams for life. Oh, they're not working. 
Probably because I don't have them routed for this patch. Anyway, D-beams. Remember D-beams? Yeah, I do. Because they're uh, not very cool, but I like to pretend they are. Ableton push, so I can trigger stuff here. Um, this, this is basically the heart of the whole setup here. This is a Blue Arp DM. Uh, Blue Arp is a... It was originally started out as a software arpeggiator. I have an interview with the creator of this and that um, the software version of, of Blue Arp on my channel, Oleg Mikiev. Check it out. Guy is amazing. Did such a cool, cool job turning that piece of software into hardware. This is basically eight instances of Blue Arp in a little box, and it works with all the MIDI stuff. So all, all the all the synthesizers are connected into here for MIDI. MIDI, out, MIDI comes out of here, goes to all the instruments, and that's why I control everything. Uh, I have a Novation 61SL Mark III as the main controller in here. So I hit, hit notes here. It triggers all the ARPs at once, or however I have keys split or whatnot, and everything goes through there. Program changes coming back from Ableton to switch patches, and it all kind of gets filtered through this blue ARP, which is cool. Um, here we have a Nord Wave. Uh, I don't have the Wave 2 yet. It is one that I want to get eventually, but for now, I'm still rocking this thing. I think these are from about 2009, so these are starting to get a little kind of old. Uh, but they sound great. Um, has some awesome Mellotron samples that came with this, and it's a cool synth. Down here we have an Arturia Beat Step, and basically this is also connected to Blue Arp. And I said there's eight instances that run. Well, these top eight buttons I have mapped to enable and disable each one of those arpeggio sections. And this can also be triggered from Ableton. So as I step through my track, um, as I step through here, you see blue and white, uh, or blue and red. Blue means active, red means um, not active. So if I hit this, you'll see the sequence changes over here. And if I come here and I turn to like uh, one where they're all off, pretty much, this one, they're all off. And I'm going to see if I can hold this. Or they're all on. There you go. Now, you're not hearing anything because I'm not playing keys because this is all live, right? So I'd have to trigger keys to play the sequences. Anyway, that's how all that works. Um, Roland Boutique JD08. That's the only boutique I have in here right now. And a Roland TB3 for some acid lines type goodness. And I have this big screen here. This is an LED screen. I don't have it on at the moment, but I can run visuals from a little one U rack PC down here. Uh, that's kind of what this stuff up here is for, is for that computer to run the screen. So I can run uh, audio reactive or I can control things with MIDI. I'm still kind of working on that aspect of everything, but it is working out pretty good. I've got some lights I'm trying to get set up here so that I can um, hang these from the truss up here and get some light action going on. And uh, that's pretty much it for in here, guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here's my living room. Maybe I ask Marshall, what the hell are we doing in your living room? Well, I have synths out here, guys, and I want to show you. So here we have an Arturia Matrix Brute. Uh, this kind of got moved out of here, out to here, once I had the uh, Oberheim OBX 8. Uh, put in the studio. This is that where, was where this used to be. So it's kind of out here for now. I can still plug headphones into it. And I have an idea to get these instruments all routed to where I can still use them. Uh, at the moment, they're just kind of standalone. So I could sit here, plug headphones in and play. Uh, if I want to record something, I can either bring in a recorder or, like I said, I'm working on, on something for that. This is a JD800. I've had this for a couple years. Well, more than a couple now. But um, when I moved out here to Florida, the humidity got to it and it started having the red glue issue. So I did tear it apart, fix it, and put it back together and it still works and it's awesome. And you saw the boutique version in the other room, but this is the big daddy and it sounds really cool. So let's go over here where we have a Kurzweil K2500X. I just got this too, not too long ago actually. I bought it online uh, from a guy up north in Connecticut. Now something happened in shipping and the end panels were destroyed. Luckily a nice, very nice man in Brazil uh, was parting out his synth and I was able to pick up pick up these and he also sold me the battery cover on the bottom. It was missing that. So um, I was able to basically make this cosmetically 
complete once again thank goodness because these are nearly impossible to find and man they are brittle do not drop your k2500x on anything because it's almost impossible to get those parts again anyway very cool synth once again this is one of those instruments that was used in halo combat evolved which is the main reason why i picked this up because i have some ideas to kind of try and rework some of those tunes and i wanted some of the original hardware for that so that's why i have this this is an arp 2600 but it is the korg release the fs now i think I don't know that we know for sure how many of these were made, but it's not very many at all. I think something somewhere around 800 in the entire world. I think there's maybe around 400 of them in the U.S. on release. I don't know for sure. I'm just stating rumor. I could be 100% wrong. Anyway, supposedly these are extremely rare, and I was super lucky enough to get a, a hold of one of these. It was uh, one of those things where it's like, oh boy, uh, they got it. I need to get it, and I got it, so... ARP 2600, this is probably my, I mean, I love the Mini Moog, don't get me wrong, but this thing is just so cool. I can do so much stuff that the Mini Moog can't. And I, I, I think I just, I think I like this more, uh, believe it or not. So, and again, I don't have an original, original. I've heard people say this sounds a little different, but whatever, it's super cool and it sounds awesome. All right, so I got one more room I'm gonna show you guys where it's kind of my overflow and stuff that's in boxes and all that good stuff. So let's check that out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so it's a little dark in here, I apologize, um, but I'm gonna do my best to kind of explain what's going on in here. This is my overflow. I, I, I'm actually missing my uh, MS2000B as well. I think it's in one of the other closets. Anyway, let's just kind of go through this. We have a Roland SH-201. If you check my channel, well, I think one of the first videos I ever put on my channel was a demo of this guy, not this one specifically, but one of these that I was selling. That's kind of how I started my YouTube channel is posting videos of demonstrations of a synthesizer that I was selling. This is one of them. Uh, it's kind of plasticky and crappy, honestly, but it does have a really good super saw and the sound engine I think is, is based on the V synth or the V synth is based on this. I don't know which order that happened. Probably this based on like a cut down version of the V synth engine, I believe. Anyway, uh, Dave Smith Instruments Prophet 08. Uh, this is one of those instruments that I always wanted and I have it and I haven't really used a lot, um, but I don't know, here it is. An Alesis Ion, uh, pretty cool. I think it's, uh, this is actually a fairly underrated uh, digital synth. Uh, it's got some really cool controls and it's a little weird with the menu structure and stuff but like it's a lot of fun and I have done some demos of this on the channel as well. Most, most of these instruments I've done demos with at some point. Um, let's see. Behringer TD3, the uh, acid version. Uh, I wanted to use this on my live rig so much because I think this sounds the best out of all the clone stuff that I have. You know the tb303 clones but there's no cc control in the filter and without that i can't really use this in a live setting the way i want to so unfortunately it's in here for right now we have a korg ms20 mini i want to say this is one of the first like reissues they did um with the ms20 anyway that's cool over here tr 8s drum machine this is just in the box right now, the MX-1 mixer, which is actually up here. I think I'm going to put this out into the living room and hook that up for some stuff here eventually. Uh, anyway, um, what is this? That's the TR-8. So the original TR-8, TR-8S, and the Roland MX-1. Okay, this is going to take a little bit. This is all the stuff that I have that's chilling in boxes uh, that I haven't pulled out in a while. Get the Polyon Tracker, still got that bad boy. The uh, Micro Brute um, Creative Edition or Creation Edition, whatever it is. Um, that's the T TB3 box, which the TB3 is actually in use in the other room. Uno Synth, Uno Drum. This is another Blue Arp. I actually picked up a another Blue Arp somebody was selling on Reverb. These are super rare, guys, because um, they were made in Russia and they're basically impossible to get at this point but i was able to scoop up a blue arp dm so i have two of these in case something happens to my original uh mine was a beta test unit actually but i have a second one just in case beat step that's the box for that sh 
01A Boutique key step. It's the black one. Luma keys, which I don't even use. I don't even know why I still have this. This is a heart mixer. It's a little tiny mixer that's USB powered. I use this when I go travel and need to make videos. It'll plug into your phone and it works works really good because you can plug that in with a microphone, headphones, and a couple other things. And uh, this works really good like when I go to KnobCon. I take this with me. Um, there's a couple of Mio USB to MIDI interfaces. This right here is the... This is that... This is that box that, that uh, Studio Electronics made for the SE2 um, to fix the stepping in the... Uh, fix the stepping in the filter. So I have this here. I can't remember what it's called and I'm dropping it. Yeah, here we go. It's the SEO2 EXT box. So I've got this with the cables for that. Uh, this is all the boutiques that Roland has put out. Obviously you saw the uh, SH01A up here, but TR08, JP08, D50, oh D05, TB03, JX08, JU06A, this is the second version of that that they did. Uh, the JD08, which is out there. VP03, which has got a little vocal, it's a, basically a vocoder string machine with a little gooseneck microphone. It's pretty cool. SEO2, and that's the only analog version of any of the boutiques. And that's what that little box went to uh, as well. Um, JU06, this was the, one of the original three that they came out with, is like the JU06, the JP8. Uh, the JP08, and uh, I can't remember the third one, the JX3 or whatever. Yeah, this one, the JX03. These two and this one, I think, were the first ones that came out. And I was kind of really disappointed because originally they didn't have MIDI CC control, but Roland later released a firmware update to where ah, you can control those over MIDI, thank goodness. Otherwise, I would not have any of these. Uh, this is the A01, that's the little controller thing with a little chiptune synth in it, and it's Bluetooth and some weird stuff that I don't ever use. I just have it because I have to complete the set. It's like Pokemon, uh, and the TR09, TR06, and I think that's all of them. So here is, it's uh, Korg SQ64. This is that little step sequencer that they came out with. I got this on Black Friday. Uh, I don't know if I'll even ever use that, but... It was on sale. These are all, this is all of the, this is how Roland gets you guys. This is all the DKO1s. So the little, the little chassis that the boutiques sit in so you don't mess them all up. Yeah, that's each one of these is that, is one of those basically. So it's crazy. Oh, uh, this is, this isn't it though. This is a Korg monolog, which I forgot I even had. Look at that, Korg monolog in the box. Uh, the Behringer stuff. Now, uh, as controversial as Behringer has been with some of their practices, marketing, whatever, they ripping stuff off. I, I don't know. The, the drum machines I was extremely interested in. So I was able to pick up an RD8 and an RD9. Um, I would be using these more, but at the moment my live rig is consisting differently. And so they're in the boxes now, but I have them if I ever want to pull them out, which is cool. Two TD3s, I have the yellow one there, and one of them is black. So I think I specifically requested a black one, and they made a black one. Well, that's a TD3 AM, TD3 BK, T, uh, TD3 MO. Oh, this is the murdered out one. It's like the devil fish. I actually don't like this one, believe it or not. I don't, uh, I, I use it a little bit, and I didn't really like it. Um, what's this? Oh. This is my Behringer Model D, chilling, and that's pretty much it for all that stuff. And then over here, I've got a DeepMind 12 that has been in the box since I moved out here to Florida. Um, I like it. The DeepMind 12 is a cool synth. It's probably kind of dark for you guys. M Audio Venom, one of the only synths I ever bought that I felt cheated. Uh, there's some people swear by this thing, but I'm telling you, it's, it's a piece of shit. Okay, the rest of the stuff in here is more related to my uh, record label. There's a computer in here that's running a 24-7 video stream on overclockedmusic.com. 
here is a Shoutcast server running an audio feed uh, for 24-7 Shoutcast radio for Overclock Music. And you go to overclockmusic.com, you can listen to this, you can watch this. Uh, right here is a IRC chat server that I set up. All this stuff's running on overclockmusic.com. So this is basically overclockmusic.com backend in this room as well with a couple of computers. And that's it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching my studio tour of 2023. Uh, I kind of miss, I, I was trying to get the Osmos in here before I did this, but that's not gonna happen till later this month, I'm guessing. And it might even get pushed, who knows? I've been waiting since 2019 for one of those. <laughs> Uh, so sorry about that. Stay tuned on the channel for Osmo stuff once I get one. Uh, other than that, yeah, I'm very blessed to have such a such a uh, massive set of really great instruments. And you know, I just this isn't something I just went out and bought one day. This has taken years and years to cultivate and curate these uh, these instruments. So don't think I'm like some bazillionaire or anything like that. No, this has taken a very long time to build up to this. So don't worry if you don't have the money sitting around right now. Just buy things one at a time, trade up for stuff, you know, that kind of thing. And just work hard, man, and, and buy what you love. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Leave some comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And this is Marshall, and I'll talk to you guys later.